She'd been treated with systemic therapy on several occasions, but had needed no treatment for the previous two years. When referred to me, however, she developed bone pain in her mid thoracic spine and in her, her sacrum. Malignant bone pain is a common enough situation that we need to manage uh, for all, in all of our cases, I'm sure. In New Zealand, because of restore constraint, we have strict guidelines about the use of palliative radiotherapy for bone pain, and it's strongly recommended that a single fraction of radiation treatment should be the normal uh, approach on the basis of well-known randomised controlled trials. But I wondered, was this the right approach for this lady? Would this control her symptoms for long enough as she had such indolent disease? I presented her case at our weekly peer review meeting. Most of the attendees are not visible in this picture, but they include all 11 radiation oncologists in our department, all residents, the chief physicist, and the, the senior RTT, who is the head of our dosimetry section. We present different court cases, uh, but also randomly selected cases for peer review and clinical treatment intent and radiotherapy plans. I must point out this is not a multidisciplinary tumor board, as there are no radiologists, pathologists, or other medical specialists. This is a radiotherapy peer review meeting. In this case, my colleagues uh, who run the stereotactic spinal service suggested not only a higher radiation dose as I had wondered about, but using a stereotactic technique. This is outside our normal guidelines, which is just we only use stereotactic treatment if there's very limited bone disease. Our physicist and the RTT uh, from the dissymmetry service uh, advised that the sacral lesion, however, was far too big for stereotactic techniques, and so recommended a VMAP technique. I think the simple case shows well enough the benefits of peer review meetings. I and my patients benefited from colleagues with different subspecialist interests, from physicist and RTT dosimetrist uh, opinions, and the residents had an educational benefit. And future patients are also likely to benefit because as a result of this, uh, we worked to change our treatment guidelines for the use of stereotactic treatments. Peer review meetings, of course, also identify errors. The literature on peer review is relatively sparse, but it does indicate that peer review results in modification of radiation treatment plans in up to 10% of cases. A 1999 study described, described real-time peer review of more than 3,000 radiotherapy treatment plans over eight years. 4% of plans were rejected because of errors, and nearly 4% were not approved because of deviations from departmental policy. Another publication more recently, in 2017, reported prospective peer review of all new cases in a community radiation oncology practice over three years, and changes in target contours recommended in 10% of cases. However, peer review meetings do have limitations. They're resource intensive, they may not be the relevant expertise locally, and it can be difficult to identify times when all clinicians who are relevant to the discussion of the case are available, and are in the same place. Indeed, this has been especially a problem during COVID times. Some of these problems can be addressed by online meetings. An example is AFRANET, the African Radiation Oncology Network, which has been facilitated by the International Atomic Energy Agency since 2012. Monthly teleconferences 